Hello, in today's video we're going to look at this idea of culturing microorganisms. Now by culturing we mean growing. So in this case the word culturing means to grow. So we're growing microorganisms and why might we want to do that? Well, we can grow a certain type of microorganism so that we can test a certain type of chemical, for example antibiotics. It might be disinfectant or something else but that's one reason, important reason why we would grow a specific type of bacteria. One way of doing this is using what we call a culture broth. So there's a kind of diagram of one. So it's a bottle that contains uh, nutrients and the bacteria that you want to grow. So they can grow happily in there. And the reason we have those nutrients, we have them in the right amounts, the right concentrations for the bacteria. And the reason we do that is so that bacteria can actually grow as rapidly as possible. And by growing rapidly, in the right conditions, bacteria, the bacteria can double their numbers about every 20 minutes if we have the right nutrients and the right temperature. So that's our culture broth. Now there is another way of growing the bacteria as well and that's using what we call agar gel plates. Agar gel plates. And these are basically petri dishes that contain nutrient. So the agar does the same job as the culture broth and that basically contains nutrients to allow the bacteria to grow. The gel plates are actually grown in these things here. Well here's one example of uh, a type of dish that it's grown in. It's called a Petri dish. But when we set it up like the diagram above we sometimes refer to them as agar gel plates. And if we grow our bacteria successfully here's an example of, a of an agar gel plate with a bacteria growing on it. And looking from above you'll notice there are colonies of bacteria growing in those darker areas there. Okay, so that's um, the overview of culturing microbes, but we need to actually know how the process is done, and you should be able to actually do the process and explain the different steps. So, here we have some of the apparatus that you might need for culturing microorganisms. And in the top left corner there we have our Petri dish with the agar gel. The agar gel contains the nutrients for the bacteria and the kind of nutrients we have might be sugars, amino acids for making proteins and other minerals and that would help the growth of the bacteria. In the center there we have our culture broth. Now that is the bacteria that we want to grow. So we want to grow those bacteria on our Petri dish with the agar gel on the left. That piece of equipment is called an inoculating loop and that's how we transfer the bacteria. And remember the Petri dish must be sterile so that there's no contamination. And the culture broth must only contain the bacteria that you want to go grow. So we have to be very careful when we do this experiment of growing our own uh, microorganisms and we must use something called aseptic technique. So that's the way we do the experiment or the way we grow the bacteria, uh, making sure that we don't get contamination you need to know the steps. So we're going to go through the steps uh, visually here just in this animation and then we're going to write some notes about how it all works. So step one is to, in, uh, to sterilize the inoculating loop. We can then allow it to cool down for a little while. We don't want to kill the bacteria in the culture broth. We then remove the lid of the culture broth. We dip in the inoculating loop, remove it and close the lid as quickly as possible so we avoid contamination of the culture broth. We then lift the lid of the Petri dish and we lift it as little as possible so that we don't get unwanted bacteria or we reduce the chance of unwanted bacteria getting in there. We use the inoculating loop to spread on top of the bacteria, on top of the agar to transfer the bacteria and we close the lid as quickly as possible. We can then go ahead and re-sterilize the inoculating loop so that we don't um, contaminate anything else and then you can allow it to cool and put it down on a safety mat or something like that. In terms of our Petri dish, we then need to make sure that it is sealed closed. So there you can see some sellotape making sure that the Petri dish is closed and then we will store it, or it's not store it, but we will incubate it upside down in an incubator at about 25 degrees. And the reason we keep the plate incubated upside down is because condensation can collect on the lid and that can then drip down onto the bacteria or onto the plate and interfere with the growth of the bacteria. 
So that's an outline, a visual outline of how we do this experiment or how we grow the microbes. What we're going to do now is actually make some notes and give reasons for the different steps as well. So we're going over it again, but now you can have a set of notes uh, to refer back to when you need to. So we're going to give an outline of the process of growing microorganisms and we're going to outline the steps and then we can give reasons for some of the steps in order to grow the kind of bacteria that we want and not the ones that we don't want. Our first step was to sterilize the Petri dish and the agar gel. The agar gel is sometimes referred to as growth medium, the plural being growth media. So we sterilize the dish and the agar gel, usually done with heat. For step two, we then sterilize our inoculating loop. And that's done by passing it through a hot Bunsen burner flame. And then we allow it to cool down for a few seconds. Once we've done that, we open the lid of our sample bottle. That, that was our culture broth that we mentioned in the, in the last section. We dip in the loop, the end of the loop, and close the lid. That step has to be done as quickly as possible. And then we go on to the next step. We open the lid of our Petri dish where we want to grow the bacteria. We open it slightly or as little as possible. We spread the loop onto the agar gel to transfer the bacteria. And then we close the lid. Again, we do that as quickly as possible. And then for the final step, we will tape the lid shut, label the lid or label the dish with name, date, and possibly the type of bacteria that you have, and then incubate in an oven upside down at 25 degrees for a few days. So that's basically the outline of the steps. We need to be able to explain why we do the different steps in this procedure. So in terms of sterilizing the Petri dish and the inoculating loop, that's really important because we want to avoid contamination. Contamination means the growth of unwanted bacteria. We need to grow the bacteria that we want and no others. Once we have heated the inoculating loop, we allow it to cool so that we don't kill the bacteria in our sample bottle. And steps three and four, we do those as quickly as possible so that we reduce chances of con contamination from the air. Remember, contamination is unwanted microbes. We tape the lid shut and we grow the bacteria upside down in the dish. Because we can get condensation on the lid, we don't want it to drip down and interfere with the growth of the bacteria. So we incubate upside down in our oven. We do the taping of the lid so that it doesn't open inadvertently by accident and we don't allow the bacteria to escape or any other bacteria to get in. It might be worth mentioning here that we would disinfect our work workspace and wash our hands beforehand or wear gloves. And on a final point, we grow at 25 degrees, no warmer than that, so that we don't get the growth of harmful bacteria. 25 degrees is what we grow the bacteria at in schools. In industry, they would do it at higher temperature, maybe 35 degrees. Okay, so there's a summary of how we do the procedure and the reasons why we do the steps. Might be useful to have that on a revision card or a flash card so that you can refer to it when you want to. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.